Okay, guess what? We're about to see a $6 million underground compound, 15,000 square feet underground, developed by a guy who wants to live forever. You are going, <laughs> you're gonna lose your mind when you see how cool this place is. Get ready, let's go. Fine, what's in it for you? <laughs> if anybody can get into a cult, I promise you. Okay, it's all me. right. <laughs> Subscribe. Not much, you don't see a lot on the surface. There's a lot more underground, 15,000 square feet. And uh, it's a basically underground mansion. Okay. With uh, everything you could want. And it was built to uh, hunker down for a year in case of nuclear war. Okay, so hold on, let's just break this down for one second. It's 15,000 square feet underground. You could live here for a year there was a nuclear war, which is awesome. And then we got the we got the listing agent right here. That's right, yeah. This is the man with the master plan to sell this house. Give us your name, give us the scoop. Well, Stefan LaForge, this is 3970 Spencer. The price is 5.9 million. That, well, to survive a nuclear war, I'm gonna say that. Can, can you put a price on that? <laughs> I don't think you can put right. a price on that. Let's see it, let's go. All right. Looks like you're nice. Typical two-story, even decent size house from the outside. I think that Chris is hitting on a major point, which is that if there was nuclear war, that they wouldn't know that we're yeah. living underneath. You it's a secret. Here. It's a secret. Right? Yeah. yeah, except for all the news articles. So what? So I'm gonna go out okay. upstairs. It's a little crowded. You get some. I'm gonna take the stairs. The, oh, uh, look at the gotta get the fallout shelter. Yeah. What the hell? All right, you, you jump in the, uh, no, come on, babe, let's go. I mean, all the little people will go in yeah. the elevator. Well, we'll take the next one down. Okay. Hit it. Wow. Down we go. This is insane. Tex, this Tex is hideaway. Tex owned it for a while, a guy named Tex Edmondson. That's why the sign is there. Wait, hold on. You knew a guy named Tex? I didn't know. He was gone 50 before feet I got down? There. It's worth, it's worth buying it just for this. <laughs> I believe it. Right. Wow, this is wild. Da banca. Oh, it's nice and perfect. Yeah, that's nice chilly down. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> I could go a little degrees cooler. 15,000 square feet. Let's walk into the front door of the house. My man. We come here into the great room, living room. And off to the left, we have our wet bar. And off to the right, we have the great room with the various kinds of furniture, kind of mid-century look. Come over here. I feel like I'm with Bugsy Siegel. Yeah. Please this share. being Vegas, of course, we have to have a blackjack table. Yeah, that's you, Mike. <laughs> here we have our billiards room. If you want to shoot some pool. I dreamed about this game every night on the road. Five ball. No, this is my table, man. I own it. You want my game? You couldn't deal with my game, Jack. You're outmanned. Let's find out. So there are really two pools in this house. That pool and then the swimming pool in the backyard. Boom, just double on tundra. <laughs> so here we have the uh, mid-century bar uh, decorated appropriately. And I think that's pretty cool. I can see you rolling up here, wearing a nice Cosmo, maybe a lemon drop. He loves Cosmopolitans. <laughs> How about a Rob Roy? 
<laughs> Rob Roy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> So Rob Roy's, the very popular drink, I'm told. Oh. I've been told I make pretty good martinis, so you, we can have good martinis. So Wait, hold on. You've been told you make a good martini? I do, yeah. Light it up, baby. Okay. Let's do it. So right, let's roll. Over here, we've got the kitchen. This is really kind of trendy. So this kitchen is very, wow. very much <laughs> of, of the original look. Hello, Ward. Okay. Where is it, Eber? This was high tech back then. You have the built-in a uh, toaster. I don't know why they didn't have a toaster built in, but they got a built-in toaster. That's actually a, I love it. That's a trash compactor. Okay. They've got Whoa. this uh this is a you gotta have the built-in can, built can on we're not animals. Yeah. That's right. This is a uh, a built-in uh, food processor. What in the world? Hold on. We've even got all the all the fittings here. Damn. You know, mixers and choppers and all. <laughs> Do you uh, use this? I, I don't have to use this, no. Okay. okay. You use the can opener. I do. And the bottle opener. And the bottle opener. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is obviously a modern era. They didn't have these in the 70s, but you know. You can look at that. That's a toaster. I wish that I had some toast right now. <laughs> I love toast. They call this a toaster. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's that's the future. That's right. There we go. Right. No. It says that it's 8:01 p.m. But if you're in nuclear warfare, I guess it doesn't even matter what time it is. No, it doesn't. That's so right. So who cares what time it is? You, all you know, it works. It's clean too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And so this is the the period kitchen. There's a pantry over there. What are we dealing with right here? That is actually that's a bread warmer. So if you've got rolls or bread or something, you can put it in there. They okay. weren't animals back in the 70s. Well, I'll tell you okay. what, for being built back then, they were very futuristic. These people had to be a genius. It's sort of, you got the Jetsons feel. Yeah, I do feel like the Jetsons. Yeah. What's the song from the Jetsons? Does anybody know? Uh, Meet George, George Jetson! Jetson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, Elroy! All right. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm never doing karaoke with you guys. <laughs> So then if we turn around and go right into the dining room here. Is that another toaster? That's another one. Yeah, they really like toast. Wait, hold on. you got to be kidding me. We have two toasters? Two built-in toasters. There we go. Next flip, two built-in so toasters. Four place for four pieces of bread in each one. You can toast eight slices of bread all at once. Now, now I'm tripping because I feel like I need another toaster in my house. <laughs> so, but uh, that's something for a future thought. I'll, we'll give it some thought. Right? Okay. So we go into the dining room right over there. I'm following you, babe. Swing it. Look at this. <laughs> so this is kind. Of, this is kind of unusual. What? Kind? So this is kind of unusual. Touch, Hold on, stop right there. Touch, touch, touch the wall. Ooh, ooh, touch, do go it. ahead and touch the wall. Do Wait, it. am I gonna get electrocuted? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just, go ahead. You're gonna go into another dimension. It's padded. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get electrocuted yeah, or killed or something. No, that was that was the big thing back then. If you were if you're well off and you were putting in a custom dining room, so you padded the walls. It's oh, yeah. not just wallpaper. That's because if, if I don't know if you saw the bar earlier, because if you're at the bar drinking, you'd be running in the walls like this. You had that sort of, It's sort of tuck and roll for the whole <laughs> dining room, okay? I love it. This is really cool. Now, question for you, why do, is there two tables? Just because if we want to seat more than six people, we, we got two. You can either do that or have one big long table. Okay. We got so do they connect? With. No, you can just put them next to each other and cover them with a tablecloth if you want it. There you go. I feel like what I would do is I would have my buddy sitting over here talking about sports, and I would have my wife and all the girls over here talking about they could, yeah, they could separate spending them. my they money. They could do their own things. <laughs> it's like they, the old they days. They could be over there talking. <laughs> Planning how to spend all your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that. Okay, cool. Let's roll. <laughs> the lanai. The lanai patio porch. Depends on where you're from. Every mural here represents a real LA. scene somewhere. <laughs> so if you've been to LA, you'll recognize this scene. So this is LA from the Hollywood Hills. Right? There's downtown LA right there. You're in the Hollywood Hills here. I think that's maybe Mulholland Drive, I'm not sure. Uh, my name is Mark Volker. Uh, I live here in the underground house in Las Vegas. And this house is currently actually owned by a nonprofit for uh, the purposes of preserving the history of Las Vegas. And, and the other mission of this house is to promote 
uh, the preservation of human life. Um, the guy who funded the purchase of this house several years ago is a very visionary man. Uh, he runs the Life Extension Foundation and he puts a lot of his money into advanced medical research uh, with the aim of taking older people and keeping them young and healthy indefinitely into the future. Like so cocoon. That's, yeah, like cocoon. <laughs> what is the name of the um, website or the foundation where people could go to after they see this house? Okay, so there's actually a website devoted to just this house. Oh, it's nice. called undergroundhouse.vegas. That's one word, undergroundhouse.vegas. And we have uh, a lot of information about the history of the house and who owned it, who built it, and what it's like right now. Of course, it's not like actually being here. You can take pictures of something, as you probably know, like if you go visit the Grand Canyon and you bring back pictures and show people. It's not like being there. So when you walked into this space, you really get, it's, very, it's a very powerful effect when you walk into this space. Much more powerful than just looking at pictures on, on a website. So that's Underground House of Vegas and also the Stasis Foundation, which is headquartered in uh, Texas, that they have their own website too. And they have a huge property in Texas too, devoted to medical research. We're gonna drop down both links on that. Now, I think that what my man here was just saying is that you can't even grasp how amazing and awesome this house is. So we're gonna do our best and take you on a tour right about now. If you took a luxury ranch style home, about 5,000 square feet, plus its yard, plus a guest house, you know, the yard including swimming pool and a bunch of other stuff. And that lot, and you put that in a big box and sunk it underground, that's what this house is. So it's not just an underground house. It's an underground house with its yard and swimming pool and guest house and all that stuff. So here's a little touch that they had here. They put, look on, carved into the tree trunk. What so is it? Mary and Jerry. Mary and Jerry. So Mary and Jerry Henderson are the couple that built this house back in 1978. Okay, hold so, on. Question for you. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. But my understanding is that Jerry Henderson built four underground houses. This is He built three. This okay. is the third one. Give us the scoop. Okay, the first underground house he built was actually a, a plat, a uh, exhibit at the New York World's Fair in 1964. So the first underground house built by Jerry Henderson was meant to be toured by people so they could understand the whole concept of underground houses. So you'd go to the New York World's Fair in the 60s and pay a buck and tour the underground house. Wow. So I even got some of their brochures in the, in the media room. Then the second underground house he built, which he built as a place for him to live in, uh, was on their ranch near Boulder, Colorado, up in the Rockies. That one I've heard, I've never been to it, but that one is over three times the size of this one. And that's big. And it's oh, yeah, now <laughs> owned by a religious ashram. They use it as their retreat. And it's actually depicted in the mural over there next to the dance floor, which we'll see later. That's the second underground house that Henderson built. The third and final underground house was this one. He and Mary lived here from 1978 to 1983. He died in 83, and then his widow Mary then lived here and she built the above ground house and lived up there a lot until, wow. until she finally passed away in 89. So just to break this down because I want to make sure I heard this correctly because it is insanely awesome. What you're saying is that number one that this is the third and final house he built right. so it's probably the best. I think so. He had the third time to charm. We go with the I, best? Would, I would agree with yeah. that. We're going to go with the best on this one. Yeah, so we're going to go with number 10 the top. But number two what I really loved about what we were just hearing is that the second house that he built is now owned by some sort of... A religious group. A religious cult situation where they're dancing everywhere. And we I, even I don't, have, I've never been there. I've never been well, there. we should go. Yeah. And they got a mural if on the you, wall. If you can invite yourself into their place, that would be... I'll get in there. Trust me. That. If anybody yeah. can get into a cult, I promise you. Okay, all me. right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first one he built, it's still there, I'm sure, on the grounds of the New York World's Fair. But when they're done with the World's Fair, they knock down all the buildings and pavilions, except for like the one iconic structure. You know, you've seen Men in Black, the movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the last scene where they're fighting the giant worm, right? Men in Black 2. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, the yeah, when they're fighting the giant worm. Oh yeah. And they have the three steel things with the UFOs on them. Flushing Queens, baby. Yeah. That is where the first underground house is. Oh. Only it's now, you know, they buried the entrance, so ah. you, don't, you don't quite know where the entrance is anymore. They we, probably we should just buy it. They probably just buried the entrance. It's probably <laughs> still there. No one's been in there for decades. Bear. I don't know. Well, we'll find part. out. And the second one is in Colorado, and then here's the third one. Besides our uh, foundation, which we're curing uh, death, which is, right. I, I'm totally involved. I live forever, dude. Bro, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to join the situation. Have you ever found two more people that want to live forever? Yeah. Right. yeah I, dying is not in my uh, category. Yeah, it's like, dying, what's in it for you? Yeah. <laughs> dying, what's in it for you? Yeah. <laughs> Die! What's in it for you? Okay, coin that. If he Don't hasn't steal that. Yeah, if he hasn't coined that, coin that for me, Mikey. Yeah, yeah. That's my next tattoo. Dying. What's in it for you? I love that. Let's all go. All go get tattoos. Where's the upside? Yeah, I don't see any upside. And when we have a band, there's a. We, th this video is not gonna be complete unless you dance with me. Uh, Just get up here and do it. Come on. All right. Get up here. Yeah. Who wants to live forever? Who wants to live forever? We want to live forever. I don't know the steps. Neither do I. Just go with it. Uh -huh. Don't think. <laughs> In the forest, too. Oh, so secondary exit in case the fire blocks the original exit. Right. right. So this is a safety precaution. This is a secondary staircase in case a fire blocks the primary exit. Right. So this is this is fantastic. This guy thought of literally everything. Uh, if I was going to spend six million dollars, I would probably spend it right here. Whoa! Oh, Lord have mercy! <laughs> now I have a question for either one of you gentlemen. What in the world is this? Rake room for? We're downstairs. Mikey, <laughs> grab this little animal right here. I feel like it's a little tiny Ewok from Star Wars. I want to give him a little kiss. <laughs> Tell us real quick about the HEPA filters. Yeah, this is a, this is an enclosed, protected environment here. So if, you, if it's dusty outside, uh, there are filters that filter the the air that gets pulled in, or you can just turn off the ventilation for a while. This space is big enough, 15,000 square feet times as a 12 foot ceiling. You don't really need to have constant ventilation. You're not gonna, it's not stuffy like that. So if you just turn off the external ventilation system, you know, you won't get whatever it is outside, the allergens or the dust, it just won't make it in here. I, I, I'm telling you, cause I have bad allergies. I'm breathing like perfect right now. Also the temperature in here is fantastic. It's like, 69 degrees. I feel per uh, hold on. I think I just saw Chris Brown shivering. It's a little chilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take us through the rest and let's rock and roll. All right. It's a working fireplace. If you want to build a fire, you can. I actually never have because we just haven't built the need. It really never never gets very cold. But if you wanted it for ambiance, you can light a fire in there. The chimney is the fake dead tree on the surface. <laughs> wow. So when you go we, back out, you'll see what looks like a dead tree. That's actually the chimney. It's a sculpture. Gotcha. So that acts as the flute for mm -hmm. the chimney. Yeah, the flute. So the smoke comes out of that when you light a fire in there. And where where is the wood held that uh, I would light this fire you know, with? Do you see the uh, doors there? Yes. Like the bottom one, you can put wood in there. Okay. The top one, we have a stereo in the top one. So we thought of everything. We have music, we have wood, we got fire. I'll take it. We got a dealer. Or yeah. now, nowadays you can just buy these electronic fireplaces. Let's go, dude. We got a yeah. dealer over here. Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, I want to say this in the best possible way. Uh, the Shining. You're like that uh, ghost character. Quick, quick hand. Yeah, quick hand. Quick hand. Uh, okay, give it to me. Hit. <laughs> well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you got? I'm sticking. I'm win this hand right now. Watch this. <laughs> oh! Oh! oh. Got to double down. <laughs> Hello. Down, Hello. No, it's not double down. It's me against you. Double down. What? Got an eleven. You always double down on eleven. I know, but it's two hundred dollars. Like it's blood money. Mike, you gotta double down. I can't double down. I can't. Mike, if you don't look like you know what you you're doing, you must Shut up, man. I, I don't look like you, you know what you're doing. For a second, you double down. Like I'm telling you, if you don't look like you know what you're doing, you gotta make sure to stay. Double down. I won. Splitting. I can't split mine? No, I'm splitting. You won. 
Oh, he beat you. Okay. All right, let's continue. Oh, oh. Uh. Mikey always knows you always double down. Yeah, and split. That's a swingers reference. Too big. Ah! Yeah. Busted. He's the worst. The guest bath with the metallic LSD wallpaper in there. LSD. Every time I think, paper. every time I think that he can't get more cool, he says something more insane. Lick he's, it. He's, <laughs> he said, "This is the LSD wallpaper." Chris Brown said, "Lick it." I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I was ten years younger, I probably would and try it and see if he was right. Wait a minute. I must show you this lickable wallpaper for nursery walls. Lick an orange. It tastes like an orange. Lick a pineapple. It tastes like a pineapple. Go ahead, try it. Okay. So back in the day, they had a projection TV here, and he had his 365 probably VHS videotapes. So that if there was no DOR, every night they could watch a different movie, right? So they wouldn't get bored. This is a man after my heart. I love movies. I could live in a one-bedroom apartment with Netflix and Amazon. If that's it. I will never have to talk to another human being, except for maybe him, because I love him. And then we've got over here. This is a display case devoted to two things: the history of their house, mainly on the left and life extension and rejuvenation on the right. Uh, so that's that's what that display case is devoted to. That little display case, as I was mentioning earlier, gives a history of the idea of immortality. So that book on the very bottom is called The Epic of Gilgamesh. That's actually the oldest piece of literature that we've ever discovered. You know, archeologists digging around, find old manuscripts, scrolls and stuff. Well, if you go to what's now Iraq, Mesopotamia, archaeologists digging up clay tablets, discovered this story, this Epic of Gilgamesh, in various copies, and they managed to get enough of it all together into one that they could figure out the whole story. But one of the major themes of the story is the uh, protagonist, one of his best friends, dies, and, and the protagonist is so angry at the fact that humans die, he goes on a quest to discover the secret of immortality. So that idea that we shouldn't be growing old and dying uh, has been with the human race since the first days of literature when we were putting stories on clay tablets all the way to the modern day through the Egyptians and that top shelf there is all about cryopreservation of people if they die before we figure out how to not grow old that's like plan B so that's that's the Alcor foundation there well that's well, good to have a plan B Plan B is there if you need it. You know, if you don't like the fact you get hit by a bus or something. I, How many bedrooms yeah. in the house? Down here. There are two in the main house, and then there's a little guest suite. So Ooh, it's really right. a three bedroom Ooh. house. Guest people, suite. Okay. Yeah, All right, we'll let's step through. There. So let's when you buy the house, house, I'll live in we'll the guest suite. Mr. There you go. Bedroom in here. Oh. Mr. H. Mr. H, right here, baby. So this is his place. I like the bevels everywhere. That's where hangs his hat. And he looks out over the fountain, which we have drained right now, but it's a fountain. Now, back in the day, they didn't have flat screen TVs, but there's a- Is this an Autotron? Concession to modernity here. I think, I think it's plugged in, let's see. Let's see here. Yeah, it comes up. Okay, so this is typically used on luxury yachts, but my man here has it installed in his cryogenically frozen, insane, amazing underground house. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I wish I was taller, actually, so I could get what, whatever it is what it is. Tippy toes. <laughs> Bunker technology. Yeah, it's... Just comes up. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you the bathroom. It's an interesting piece of artwork in the bathroom. The only original piece of art that came with the house is displayed in the bathroom. Mr. Mr. Henderson's bathroom. Oh, Lord have mercy. Is that his wife? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what so, the world? <laughs> so, so back in the day, um, that, that artist, Leo Jansen, was one of the two major, there was another guy, uh, Robert uh, Neiman. Uh, but anyway, they were artists in residence at the Playboy Mansion okay. in nice. LA. And they did, you know, images of all the gorgeous women. And that's one of them. And I, th well, apparently. I, I, I believe that is Dorothy Stratton. <clears throat> okay. Oh. You know who Dorothy Stratton was. Yeah, yeah it's, a, a also, name. it's an extremely sexual yeah. image. <laughs> and, and so this is still here because those are the kind of people they had here in the 70s when they had parties. Wait, hold on. You're saying there was Playboys, Playboy models partying here? Of course. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, Mr. Henderson owned Hold his on. own. Why live forever? Okay. Yeah. I mean, Mr. <laughs> Henderson owned his own 707. Okay. Just like Hefner. Only Henderson had a pilot's license, so he would fly it. Wow. He'd go, let's go to Europe with his buddies, and they'd take off from McCarran and fly or tour to New Zealand or wherever. So they had really cool parties back in the day here with people like they would play mates, mm -hmm. and that's one of them. Well, I don't know what I'm doing wrong in my life, but I want to make friends with him and his friends so I can live in places like this. <laughs> Come back to my underground lair. That's right. So to the right here, we'll go into Mrs. Henderson's bedroom. Wait, hold on. Say that one more time? She had her own bedroom? Yeah, this is Mrs. Henderson's bedroom right here. That's how you make a marriage work, Rich. Okay. That's right. You don't have to. You can, you can separate when you feel Keep like Keep in mind, it. my girlfriend's here. <laughs> <laughs> So here's, oh, that goes for everybody. Yeah. Now you'll notice from the kitchen and then from this room, Mrs. Henderson had a favorite color. What was you it? You could guess what that is. <laughs> Cream white. Right. <laughs> so the things that are original in this room are the carpet, the curtains, and the wall covering, which is, I believe it's jacquard silk or jacquard satin. One of the silk. Two. Okay. One hundred percent silk, because yeah. that's what they would have used also in the uh, hotels uh, during this era. This is actually, uh, whether it's your color or not your color, it's actually really beautiful and very expensive. So keep that in mind. So then you come down the hallway here, and this is her dressing room slash big old closet, which a friend of mine said, that's, wow. as, that's as big as my New York apartment. <laughs> It looks like George Costanza almost. Go to George Costanza's stance. Oh, I've seen that. Go to George right. Costanza. <laughs> We're going to drop George Costanza in right there. <laughs> wow, so that's that's a strong closet right there. Here is her bathroom. Wow. She should have a naked guy out there. <laughs> so uh, if you look at the tub, watch the tub there. Uh -oh. We'll turn on the light. Wow. So, so today, in today's world of real estate, this would be an onyx, but this is a cultured marble. It's something you would see very popular back in the, you know, 50s, 60s, right. 70s. That's right, you're right. So, so, look, so this place, I think cost 10 million to build back when they built it. And today that translates into, I don't know, $40 million or something. Yeah. No. Two, two stripper poles, holding up the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> What's in that, a, a, a pool, pool room? It's the guest house, Rich. It's where I'm gonna live when you buy this. All right, I'm down with that. Okay. Not going in the cave. <laughs> Didn't come here to not go in the cave. <laughs> when well, we see a cave, in. we go in. I'm not going in. Who's not going in the cave? Oh yeah. Okay, I don't wanna go into the water. Oh, it's the deep end, Rich. Yeah. If not watch your head, you will smack your head. Not me. <laughs> the Andersons were like five foot four and stuff. What in the tarnations? Well, that's not the way out. What? what? What is that? Oh, there's a third staircase! Yeah. So wow! Nice! Holy moly, macaroni! So that goes up to the surface. That's another way out. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what he was saying. That's yeah. where all the hookers escape. That's right. <laughs> escape? Yeah. Not, not escape, but run away from the wives. Uh, and then th this is all uh, retaining walls. It looked almost it looks almost like pour in place concrete. It is. It is pour in place yeah. concrete. So when they built this place, see that see that portal there that's been filled in? Yeah. So when they were originally building it, they excavated the pit. They left that open so they could, you know, walk through here and bring equipment in and out. And then when they were finally done furnishing and building this out, they filled that up and then backfilled with dirt. Oh, so that was one of the original access ports when they built the house. Okay, so uh, now, somewhere I, around oh. here is a secret tunnel. Oh, are you going to show us? I don't know exactly where it is. Oh. <laughs> I, I know where it's not. Okay, and it's probably only one place it, it could be, but I haven't actually verified that yet. Inside okay. these trees are steel columns which support the ceiling. So all of the trees are actually support columns for the ceiling, the roofs. Except for the one behind the barbecue there, which is a chimney. Yeah, sure. That's a chimney. All the rest, this one is a support, that one. And if you look at the main house along the corners, you'll see also vertical beams that support the big steel beams that hold up the roof. And now we have our own personal van away and my girlfriend to open up the barbecue. Oh, so that's, that's a Gen Air, that's a Gen Air barbecue. There's a fan in there that takes the 
fumes and sucks them down and evacuates them through the chimney behind it. It's a down vent. It's a down vent. It's a down draft. So that's how they can do barbecue down here in this enclosed space. This is similar to a lot of high rise stuff when we have the down vents, but well, often do not get the uh, Flintstone style uh, yeah. barbecue, and you never get my girlfriend to open a barbecue because usually I'm doing the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, the feel of this, the feel of this is. Uh, Austin Powers meets Fred Flintstone. It's kind of the mashup. I love it. it it's, yeah. it's Austin Powers meets Fred Flintstone meets James Bond. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Old guest house. That's where you're gonna live, Mikey. Oh, keep the bar. Oh my God! Look at this mid-century modern. Awesome. Mid-century is the term. That's right. It's awesome. Okay, you can't say anything else. It's awesome. Like mid-century. Look, look at the bathroom. Here. Yeah. So there we have our swag lamps, <laughs> totally mid-century. <laughs> the seashell sink. The seashell sink, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Everything you're seeing is spectacular luxury bunker, but what you're not seeing is what's behind it, what's holding it up. So if you go up the stairs in the pantry, you'll see what's above the drop ceiling. Oh, Can nice. you show us? Yeah. Let's do it. It'll be sweet. Oh boy. <laughs> so imagine this place is completely surrounded by metal and concrete. If you don't turn on the phone repeaters, you don't have cell reception. So when they bought the place, I was down here with my phone flashlight feature. And uh, you're hoping your flashlight doesn't die because we're crawling <laughs> inside this attic, Mark and I, oh, wow. trying to gauge the, 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 the strength of the place. And you're just hoping that because you can't find your way back in the dark, you know, it's going to be tough. The <laughs> phone dies. I would agree. That's but come on and see what's what's really holding this place up. <laughs> and they were never seen. So you got to come again. up here and then you got to sit on this side. You just kind of scoop that. The secret tunnel. Yeah. Get a scoop. The boot scoop and boogie. Oh, wow. He can just get, Mike, you can stick the camera up here. Yeah. This is gonna show my ass. Those are the threes. Oh, God. <laughs> There's no way I'm getting up here. Oh, if you can just turn it again. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, my God. Those are the smaller ones. Jesus. Look that way. Those are the three foot beams there. Kimosabi. Wow, that's crazy. Cool. Very, very cool. So they've owned this for seven years. 2014. Shot dispenser! I think you push the whole cup up against it. I don't think so. And that's what opens. Negative, dude. Wait, you think I didn't try it already? No. I don't want with it. God knows how old these are, too. All right, Mike, are you ready? Just because you know I have a fear of water. <laughs> don't Serious girl. business. I don't even go to your bathtubs. We got, this is like the Playboy Mansion. We have- Yeah, that's what I call it, the Playboy Grotto there. The Playboy Grotto, that's yeah. what, my, what my man just said right there. I can see uh, that. We have, now I'm wondering, so the what happens in this one that doesn't happen in this one? That one is heated, that's an actual spa. This one. You can turn on the bubbles and everything. You gotta graduate to that the one. The other one is just a, a cold plunge pool. Ooh, that's what, that's that much. The of the main pool. So that nice. one's the heated spa right up there. It's not heated now, you know, we haven't turned it on. You know a lot of crazy fun things happen right here. And you're Sick. a big... Ah, yes! <laughs>